Hey everybody, my name is Helium Lemon Fifteen, and welcome back to Evans Remains. This is the second part of what is so far a wonderful LP. At least I hope so. Um, of a a sort of strange little indie game. Not strange as in surreal, or the gameplay is particularly strange. Just kind of hard to wrap your head around, especially with all the story beats uh, interrupting the gameplay. And um, there, there are a lot of people out there who do not like the story of this game. Uh, uh, and spoiler alert, <laughs> I think I might be one of them. Although it is, it is thought provoking. But uh, I was gonna have like a nice relaxing video. Uh, where I was going to like rant about like different games that I've been playing and then I ended up uh, getting almost like 18 minutes of dialogue and story beats. Um, so I'm gonna read some of it and then probably just rant for some of it. How do I put this? You're wasting my time. My name is Vanille and I'm here on behalf of Upbring Labs. We're looking for someone important, a boy named Evan. Prodigy boy missing. Maybe you've heard of him, his name has been everywhere these last few years. Actually, and I'm being honest here, I've never- Shut up, I'm not done yet. A message for help was recently received from an unknown island, which makes you, my friend, a suspect in his disappearance. You follow? Just being here on an uninhabited island means you're involved. If you keep refusing to speak, I will be forced to arrest you. So if you want to keep walking around, writing frantically in that notebook, you'd better start stalking. I mean, talking. <laughs> you better start talking. <laughs> Vanille, right? Would you mind following me? I want you to see something. What is it? Uh, why don't you see for yourself? Love the reflection of the water. Love the uh, sort of rays of sunshine. It all looks so good. And then here we're sort of transitioning back to a memory again. I love this uh, sort of like, sort of chugging metal song that plays during these cutscenes. It's actually oddly memorable, uh, just for the tension that and mood that it sort of creates. It's not my favorite song in the game. I think one of my favorite songs in the game uh, at least one that I have nice memories of from my first playthrough um, is coming up at some point in this video, but I'll know it when I hear it. May not be the best place, but look, from sleeping in the dump to this, it has to be my lucky day. So different colored eyes. I forget what the word for that is. Hang on. Since nothing else is happening, I'm going to go on Google and look up the uh, word. Um, heterochromia. Okay. Well, like, different colors. Heterochromia. That makes sense. If the roots of the words, like the root words, make sense, then it's usually easy, easy to remember a word, you know. So something something immortality, which even if possible I don't think immortality is desirable. Um, or it could be the kind of immortality where like, you never die of natural death, or cancer, or anything, but, like, you could still die in an accident. I don't know. This part of the game is oddly sort of futuristic. I mean, there's this big, like, abandoned mall in the background. It's almost like Kirby. It's, a, it's sort of almost like Yume Nikki, and I compare everything to Yume Nikki. I compare everything to Kirby, so... So there's some legend about a, a city and an island. It's a lot more than I, what I was expecting to find. 
and I hope it's for me. You hope it's for you? What? Wait, no, I don't understand. What does that mean? Does that mean you hope no one has gotten there first? I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Clover Emore. Uh, until now, I was certain you were just another person searching for the artifact. I can't let anyone find it first. Relax, I couldn't care less about immortality. Thank you. Immortality is stupid anyway. But I'm sorry to say that I haven't seen a single soul apart from us. Yeah, even I doubt he's here. Hey, at least the monoliths are fun. Looks like they made sure their visitors didn't die of boredom. Like, yeah. So, Vanille slash Dysis. The recurring joke is that she could just walk around them or s swim around them. And she, you know, refuses to walk around them. I think walking around them would be a possibility. I know they say swim around them early on in the game, and they would only say swim around them if walking around them wasn't a possibility. Which is kind of stupid. I like his character portrait. All of these character portraits are, are like, sort of slightly anime-looking. Although they're not strictly speaking... Oh, they're not strictly speaking anime. My sixth sense, my spidey sense. Why don't you try have some fun? If he's here, it's just a matter of time before he shows up. I thought I was the one who'd find him, not the other way around. Oh, if you only knew him. Things are never simple when he's involved. The legendary Evan, huh? Will you really be here? Fine, I'll, I'll continue after a little nap. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Uh, now prepare for uh, cutscenes for the rest of the video. I'll try to just be patient. God, what time is it? I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Good morning, Nicola. I said good morning, idiot. But why isn't this thing working? Huh? My transmitter. Oh no, oh no, where is it? They're gonna kill me. Huh? What's this? Oh, that, that was more like a panicked what's this. What, what I did was more of a panicked what's this, but it was more of a surprised what's this? What's this page doing here? What? What? What's this? If you're a good actor, you get quieter when you're surprised. At least that's my philosophy. You get quieter when you're more excited or like deeper in thought. Like I, I believe in the power of getting quieter because like I once, I don't know, I told my friends to read one of my lines like a specific way. Well technically it wasn't my line, it was the playwright's line. But when I was sort of directing it I was like, she's repeating this word and she's getting softer each time she says it like because she's sort of getting, she's getting more excited, but she's also getting more absorbed in her own thoughts. Anyway, that was a, that was a whole tangent. This is what I get for taking weird jobs. Clover's very impressed by the existence of teleportation and I don't blame him. So, um, I've been playing some different video games. I've been playing Ocean's Heart, which is like, really good sort of Link's Awakening like or Link to the Past like uh, made by an indie developer um, something something Raz uh, Max Mraz yeah, Max Mraz. It's such a beautiful looking game. It's not like, it doesn't look like it's a game that was developed by a single guy, and yet it is. It's it's a very pretty game. It, it really, it looks like sort of a, a Link's Awakening and Wind Waker and, and Link to the Past all had a baby. It has, 
It has sort of bright colors and sort of like a, a water theme. Um, when I first like saw it, I I uh, thought that it was going to be more like a, a generic sort of RPG maker game, and I was very pleasantly surprised that it's sort of it's a Zelda like, and it has you know, short dungeons and like, you know, a couple towns and like, it doesn't seem like to, to be a very long game. Um, then again, like, I think it's longer if you do like all the side quests and shit. Um, I've been playing a few other like little random games. I've been playing Cosmic Osmo and the Worlds Beyond the Mackerel, but I've only played it for like, two play sessions adding up to an hour total and I think I've seen all that there is to see in that game and I'm like well okay but like I love those old CD-ROM games and it's it's a game by the developers of Myst uh Rand and Robin Miller and you know it, it's before they made Myst so I was really intrigued and like it's, it has like a lighthearted, like childish sort of tone. Childlike tone. I don't know, whimsical. Rather than mist. Mist is kind of the opposite. I mean, it's not the opposite, but like, mist is for young adults, whereas Cosmic Osmo is definitely more for kids. Uh, I've been playing another crappy RPG Maker game by Aldorlia, one of my favorite developers. I like to buy their games even though I know they're completely crappy. Um, I've also been playing um, a game by Zeboid Games. They made uh, Breath of Death 7 and Cthulhu Saves the World and uh, just different RPGs with like a tongue-in-cheek sort of sense of humor. Uh, and this is a game called Penny Arcades on the Rain Sleep Precipice of Darkness 3, which I have no idea why it's called that, but the main character is uh, Taiko Brahi, or however you say that name, and he's a character in um, that one poker game that also has Strong Bad and Sam and Max, and the Heavy from Team Fortress 2, which is probably the only character out of those four or five that most people know. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's on the rain sleek precipice, on the rain sleek precipice of darkness, one, two, three, and four, except one and two were made by one developer and three and four were made by another developer and they're different like graphically they're different in gameplay style so i'm starting with three don't question it um but it's it's got a sort of interesting sense of humor um the guy who makes those games he's he's got a really funny sense of humor i forget what his name and again using google um, who's the main uh, director developer at Zeboid Games? Uh, is it Robert Boyd? That's not the name. That's not the name that I remember. But I guess it is. different games. They have Breath of Death 7. They have a... Uh, um, oh, Jerry Holkins is the name that I remember. He's a uh, co-creator and writer of the webcomic Penny Arcade. So, I guess Taiko Brahi is a character from a webcomic called Penny Arcade. I never read the webcomic Pe Penny Arcade. I don't read any webcomics, really. Except for, like, that one that's like a parody of a, a guy that's inside a video game. Kid Rad, I think it is. Like a really old webcomic. Um, well, 
so that's interesting. So... He sort he's, uh... They made the game along with the dude who wrote the webcomic. That's super cool. What's your friend's name? Vincent. Vincent Vall. Why? Just wanted to make sure it wasn't someone from Upbring. I imagine anyone who leaks information ends up regretting it. Something, something about human activity. Maybe they have a secret underground base or something. I'm really hoping you're wrong. The artifact is my only hope for her. Oh, that's right. You mentioned it. you wanted it for someone else. Could you elaborate on that? It's my little sister. What happened to her? Let's say her health... She's not in the best condition, and she doesn't have much time left. Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I had no idea. Quick, idiot, say something before you ruin it even more. And what's her name? Dysus. What? Heh, that's strange. I thought I heard Dysus. That's what I said. Dysus is such a weird name. It's like... Isis. It's like, what, are there two of her? <laughs> Sorry. Or like, or is it like Dionysus? I don't know. I, I will, I will not joke about people's names because... Because people are like... Sometimes, like, people are offended by their names. Like, making fun of them. Like, I knew somebody whose name was Placonica, and like, it lended itself really easily to like, oh, you're my Placonica friend, and I, I don't know, he, he was just like, very offended by this, and it was kind of unexpected, but I don't know. Immediately getting distracted by picking my toes. I'm, I'm sorry, that's gross. I shouldn't have mentioned picking my toes, except it's what I'm doing. So they're playing some, like, board game or game or whatever, and uh, the plot twist is that they're both really good at it, but they're both, like, pretending that they're like, <laughs> oh, it's my first time playing. Oh, you don't know what you're getting into. Oh, whatever. Oh, this is a pretty song and a very pretty night sky. Um, but I think it's where we will have to stop playing for now, and I'll see you for hopefully some actual gameplay. Goodbye.